April 23rd, 2024 is our first post-eclipse season lunation, a full moon at four degrees Scorpio square Pluto. As we probably know, full moons are culmination points in time when a part of our life experiences a climax. As we step back and reflect on the fruits of this area of life, are we satisfied with how things turned out? Can we make things better for the next metaphorical harvest? Let's take a look at the ruler of this lunation, Mars. At the time of this lunation, Mars is at 24 degrees Pisces, who is sitting in between Saturn at 15 degrees Pisces and Neptune at 28 degrees Pisces. In this context, Mars is still experiencing the after effects from the Saturn conjunction, which was very rough. It coincided with the death of OJ Simpson, the ruling of the death penalty for a Vietnamese real estate embezzler, Trung Mai Lan, and the murder-suicide of a popular astrologer, Mystic Lipstick, aka Danielle Johnson or Ayoka. In the echoes of those Saturnian impacts, Mars is running into a conjunction with Neptune, which enhances themes of delusion, confusion, manipulation, and elusiveness. Neptune is like a mirage, not what you really think it is, and not as it seems. Neptune can also enhance themes of spirituality, sacrifice, victim mentality, and addiction. But overall, I think it symbolizes that we are seemingly in between a rock and a hard place. We can clearly see the boundaries of Saturn providing limitations. With Neptune on the other side, the way forward is unclear. It may make us feel lost and unsure how to proceed. But if we remember that Neptune requires blind faith and sacrifice, we can move forward into the unknown, and even though we don't know what to expect, we have to trust the sacrifices we will need to make that will be worth it in the end. Mars is also sextile to Jupiter and Uranus and Taurus. The sextile assists in amplifying the energies on either side. Whenever I see a combination of Mars and Uranus, I think of accidents or explosions. Jupiter adds growth and expansiveness to the mix. With Mars and Pisces on a mundane level, this could invoke accidents or war-based explosions in the ocean. For example, it could manifest as a combination of a Taurian Earth event, like tectonic plates shifting that triggers a volcano, hurricane, or typhoon. But of course, it could be any combination of the many significations of all planets and signs involved. Those are just extreme stereotypical potentials. Since the Jupiter-Uranus conjunctions only happen every 13 to 14 years, it is relatively rare. This could symbolize how we are in a unique time period with new things to consider regarding our safety and security, the Taurus and Scorpio axis. It is time to think about the Taurian state of our soil, the health of our ecosystems, where we live, the comforts of our lives, the state of our possessions, our innate skills and talents, and what makes life beautiful, and what we need to nourish ourselves and thrive. Especially since after the pandemic, all of those considerations have shifted. We all know we can't go about doing things in the way we used to. We have to revise all of that, especially with Mercury retrograde on the North Node, co-present with Venus and Chiron and Aries. We are being asked to clean up our act and make a fresh start for ourselves. South Node in Libra is doing away with the ways in which we used to relate to each other. It is doing away with the unnecessary niceties that were holding us back, holding us in a state of not wanting to rock the boat too much. It's giving us the opportunity to speak up in a way we haven't before, giving us permission to say what needs to be said, even if it's not so polite. That is the only way we can make these much needed shifts. This lunation is squaring Pluto, adding a harshly intense opportunity or conflict regarding power dynamics. What has come to pass in a certain area of our life has presented us with an outstanding consideration that could make us question whether we have full agency of a situation or if someone or something else has a heavy influence on us. 
Pluto and Aquarius indicates those questions of influence may be coming from societal structures, technology, AI, or other community-based humanitarian considerations. We may want to sit with those questions and think about how much agency we actually have in those regards. Could we get more involved? How could we gain more influence on these topics instead of having them take control of us? Instead of feeling defeated about outside forces taking control of our lives, in what ways could we take back some of that control? It could be as simple as learning more about the forces at hand. After all, knowledge is power. Could we make better use of our time doing more impactful work? How can we step into our own power?